Right, it's a brand new week in IPL 2022 and we have the most one-sided rivalry in the league. I'm talking about Mumbai Indians taking on KKR and it's going to be a riveting contest. Join us in this match preview because we have the Professor W.V. Raman in the house. Yes, boys and girls, my name's Avnish Hegde and as usual, you're watching Cricket.com. We have another fascinating week building up to the playoffs, of course. So we have WE right now joining us. WE, first and foremost, how are we? I'm fine. Our weather is much better today in Chennai. Hopefully, it'll continue. It's a little bit cloudy and uh, we've got a breeze blowing as well. That's rather unusual in the month of May. Yeah, sounds a little bit like Bangalore to me because we were blessed by a good shower last night as well, which has kind of cooled the city. But well, we speak about cities of joy, which is KKR, and of course, the maximum city, Mumbai, and they'll go head to head in this one. My first question to you is who will finish higher in this year's table? Because it's been a year to forget for both the franchises, both are languishing at the bottom. If you had to pick one franchise to finish higher above the other, who would it be? Yeah, they've been extraordinary in terms of being unpredictable, haven't they? Uh, unfortunately, yep. uh, both these uh, franchises have not had the best of run. Primarily because uh, somehow uh, the batting and bowling units have not been able to perform together in a game. And on the odd occasions, uh, they managed to do so. They've done well. But uh, it's unfortunate and it's so sad to see two high-profile uh, franchises not really doing as well as expected. And uh, to be in a situation that they are in currently. Hmm. KKR, of course, coming on the back of a stinging defeat, a 75-run loss to Lucknow Super Giants. Now, if you were part of the KKR coaching setup, what would be the biggest headache from your point of view? Uh, is to try and put up a leaven that will go out there and win games for you. The reason why I say that is that because uh, it's been a little bit uh, muddled in terms of getting the combination because uh, it doesn't look like there's been a clear-cut uh, plan or clear-cut uh, uh, role allocation because you did not get to see uh, the foreign players that were retained to play. For example, Pat Cummins, he was retained, but he was not getting games. Uh, he had one bad game. He won a game for them with his batting. But after that, uh, consider the form that he's been in and uh, he has not been played at all. And then you have Sam Billings, who's sitting out warming the benches more often than not. Now, I always maintain if you're going to require foreign cricketers in a setup, it is to do two things. One is to either be able to generate 150 plus pace or at least 140 to try and rattle the batters who are perhaps a little bit weak in the hearts when it comes to playing fast bowling. Or you have two batters who can really bash anything that's bowled at them. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's 90 kilometers per hour or whether it's 900 kilometers per hour. They must have the ability of hitting the fastest of bowlers. Now, here you have, you've not really sort of got uh, the batting order sorted out. You've got Sam Bellings, who's obviously capable of uh, getting runs quickly enough. You would have also doubled up as a keeper. That was not utilized. Then the uh, lot of confidence was uh, placed on Finch. He doesn't fire at all. It's rather sad to see a former national captain, uh, Australian captain, I mean, not really sort of having the best of times in this IPL. We've all enjoyed his batting in the past, but somehow it's been an absolute washout for it. So, it's been a uh, year of uh, real problems for KKR, but uh, they got to go through this season. They got to see what uh, best they can do in the remaining games, if only for the fact that they have won the ch championship twice in the past. And uh, they've been there and thereabouts when it comes to following, and also when it comes to putting up good performances. Mm. Remember, they won their first three out of their four games this year, and since then it's been downhill. And like you said, chopping and changing really doesn't help a side. Now, let's have a small rapid fire, should we, with the professor himself right now, in terms of KKR's report card so far this season. And I'm going to ask you about five things, and I want you to rate them out of 10 WE. So we'll start with KKR's batsmen. How much would you rate them? You'd probably give them a four, four and a half. Okay, four and a half. Mean but true. What about the bowlers? Bowlers, you'll probably get about six and a half to seven because Umesh Yadav has had a grand year. Sunil Narin has been as good as he can be. And you also had the other bowlers chipping in now and then. Russell picking up four foreign innings and then bowling good overs whenever he's called on to bowl. So I think I would give them six and a half, seven there. Okay, so 4.5, six and a half, seven. What about Shreya Sai's captaincy then? How much would you rate that out of 10? 
a captain is only as good as his team because um, uh, it's not really worked out the combinations that they have tried uh, together as a, a leadership uh, unit, uh, McCallum and uh, Shreya Zayab. So I would want to venture to giving marks to the captain because he can be led down by his team uh, on occasions, and that's exactly what has happened. But however, the counter argument would be that he should be able to pick the best possible eleven which he has in. Yes, that's something that can be debated about, but I don't think I'll venture into that and uh, go to the extent to awarding marks. Okay, fair call. We'll let that be. What about the overseas pros then? Because we spoke about Narayan, Russell, Cummins. As a unit in terms of all their foreign pros, how much would you rate them out of 10? Yeah, Narayan has been right up there, uh, as has been Russell uh, capable of uh, churning out uh, the cameos that he's done and also he's picked up wickets. Yes, uh, the unfortunate thing is that the others have not had really uh, a fair run to be judged or assessed even. Uh, Cummins hasn't played as many games as one would expect him to play. Gardner he's just been uh, away from it all. And then you had Finchie who's had a very bad year. So obviously, uh, let's not embarrass uh, uh, a top-notch batter who's done so well in international cricket by awarding marks based on a a phase where he's had a bad run and then you have Sam Billings again who's not really uh, got uh, enough opportunities for us to even uh, venture into assessing him. So I would reckon a 5 on 10 or is that too harsh? No, that's a little bit too harsh uh, given the fact that you know there have not been enough chances given to them and mm. uh, on balance you would probably have to say somewhere along 6. Okay, and lastly, their new acquisitions this time around. Rahane, Umesh, Finch comes to mind. The Saudi, Anukul Roy. How much would you rate the business that they've done in the auction? Yeah, I think this is one thing that they need to look at. Yes, they are dispassionate when it comes to letting go of players. But they should also do the same thing when it comes to picking players. Uh, when I say this, I don't mean that um, uh, I'm running down any player that they have picked. What I mean by that is the timing of what they do in terms of uh, uh, getting rid of players or uh, letting players go or bringing in new set of players. For example, Shubman Gill, a young man who has done so well in this format, um, he's got a lot of cricket ahead of him. He's likely to play all formats, perhaps even for India in the coming years. And then he was settling down nicely with the Calcutta Knight Traders, but he was let go. And then you bring in Rahane, uh, who's again um, a really uh, celebrated batter. Uh, great attitude, nice guy, but of course, he's had his share of problems when it comes to form in the format that he's best suited to, that is in test cricket. And uh, he's not been uh, a one who would be the top choice uh, in most of the sides when it comes to T20 format, unless, of course, he was going to be leading the side because of his captaincy experience. It was coming in, that was a different issue, but he was uh, obviously considered more as a player, which meant that uh, getting an uh, releasing an extra or not going for him in auction and getting somebody whose first pick would not be even from his shoes he would not be picking the p20 format himself to play or rather pick a longer format so that i thought was a little bit of a strange uh, choice there yes sometimes you do get into situations like this in an auction but i thought uh, maybe this is somewhere in these regions in these areas they could have probably done better okay Having said that, let's move on to the Mumbai Indians then because that five-run win against Gujarat Titans would have probably just ignited a small spark going ahead in the seasons to come. My question to you is what possible changes can they make going forward? Now, the playoffs are obviously out of their reach. We all know that. Should Deval Brevis come back into the team, you reckon? Yeah, I think they should try and groom him uh, for the future because he's got a lot of talent. He also has that... Uh aggressive attitude uh, that is uh, always a great thing to see in a young man and he's shown uh, a little bit of promise uh, in at least one or two knocks uh, that he's featured in in the season so i think i would rather play him uh, is the pollard which means that it's perhaps in a way like to like replacement pollard of course would understand because he knows what it is all about uh, he needs uh, to understand and he will understand that youngsters need to be groomed into the uh, mumbai indian setup so that uh, if Brevis comes good, he can be there like uh, Pollard was for the Mumbai Indians for a long time. So that is something that they need to uh, look at. But I think uh, what Mumbai Indians have done well, even though they have not had the best of runs, is that they have also brought in a lot of hope in the way they picked the side in the auction. They got a lot of youngsters. Still, Akwarma, we spoke about it in one of the earlier shows. They got Shokin, they got Brevis, 
uh, I think where probably things did not go well for them was uh, with regard to Tamil Mills because there was a lot of hope when he came in based on what he did in the World Cup and then a lot of hopes were pinned on him but somehow things didn't happen for him. These things happen. There is no explanation for all this. Form is something that can desert a player at any point in time. So that's exactly what has happened. So that is unfortunate. And of course, if you look at the top run getters, you don't find Rohit Sharma there. Uh, obviously, you know, that is something that um, did not happen for them. Even Surya, uh, he was getting runs, but it was a little bit sporadic. It was not uh, a case of him firing almost every time he walked out to bat. Yes, it is difficult to do it. But of course, uh, it was a case of uh, uh, factors not really coming together for Mumbai Indians, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately is a key word there. But onwards and upwards, I guess, from here on. Finally, just to wrap up this match preview, before I get your predictions, I want to ask you about Justin Bumrah because it's the inevitable question. Uh, should players like him be allowed to have one off a bad season? Because obviously he hasn't had the support around him. And should India, more importantly, be worried about his form right now? I think this is the same kind of thought process that is going. This is the same kind of uh, views that were expressed prior to the start of the series in England, test series in England. There's a lot of talk about Bumrah not being really uh, uh, effective enough, not being penetrative enough because, you know, they felt that he was not getting as many wickets as he should have by that time before getting into the uh, England series. But he did extraordinarily well there, which means that uh, a T20 format especially is uh, not the uh, ideal format uh, to gauge a player's form uh, as to what he is likely to do in international cricket because we've seen a lot of times that a player who has great international series coming on the back of it uh, fails miserably in IPL and vice versa also happens. And Bumra is uh, experienced enough and he's also going to be playing with a pack of bowlers with whom he's always hunted extraordinarily well in the last three, four years. So that is a different thing altogether when he's going to be bowling with uh, uh, the likes of Shami and all these other characters in the side, Indian side. Things are going to be different. He's going to be bowling with guys who understand him and he's also going to be bowling with all those guys in tandem who he understands well and he also has the entire team backing him. Not that I'm saying the Mumbai Indians team doesn't back him. It's just that the situation and the, uh, as they say, Mahol is different when you get on to the Indian wrestling room. So, I'm sure that uh, he will uh, be as uh, effective and also as productive as he's been in the past. Okay, let's see how that story unfolds. From an Indian fan perspective, fingers crossed Bumrah gets back to his absolute best. Predictions then, because the last time these two locked on earlier this year, it was Pat Cummins who absolutely blew the Mumbai Indians away. Do you think KKR can make it two wins in this year's competition or do you think Mumbai will peg one back? I think, you know, based on the last victory of theirs, um, the Mumbai Indians might have got the spark that they were looking for. And this is perhaps uh, one game that they'll go in with a lot of confidence, considering the way that uh, things have panned out for them. This is one game they'll be upbeat when they get into the field. And I think uh, they will get past the line against the Knight Riders. Okay. It's not very often that you see WE kind of going against the Knight Riders because he's had an affiliation with them. But enough of my fluff. You guys can catch more content on cricket.com, especially with WE and all the other experts. So get subscribing. And of course, we'll see you soon post-match on Sunday night.